What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to run NV Clean install for a very lightweight NVIDIA graphics driver. This means less space used, less things running at once, and possibly slightly better performance. But your mileage will vary. Without too much extra info, let's go ahead and do this. In the description down below, you'll find a link to download NV Clean install. Just download it, select any server, save it, and open it. The main page over here is where we'll be selecting our graphics driver that we want to download and install. You can see your current driver version, DCH, whether it's 64-bit, a mobile GPU, and whether it's a studio driver. You can choose install best driver for my hardware, which I would recommend. Otherwise, you can manually select a previous version. You can show all versions to show even incompatible ones. But for most people, installing the best driver is obviously the best solution. You can also choose from your disk or choose to install NV Clean install. But for now, just running it from our downloads folder is good enough. We'll click next here and it'll pop up with this section here. This is where we can customize what we want to actually install when we install our NVIDIA driver. So what exactly do we choose here? Well, in the bottom right, we have all to tick everything or recommended to choose only recommended options and minimum to select the absolute minimum. I'd recommend choosing the recommended just for a start. If you're using a laptop or notebook, make sure you have Optimus ticked here. And besides that, these are all you really need. You don't even need HD audio via HDMI if you're not going to use an HDMI cable to play audio on your TV or monitor. I would recommend, however, installing Visual C 2017 runtimes just to make sure there aren't any missing DLLs. This shouldn't have any impact on performance as these are probably installed anyways, or at least should be. Then everything else here is your preference. If you're going to be using a USB-C monitor, for example, choose USB-C driver. If you're using frame view to measure frame times and things like that, take this. If you have a quadro, you can take this. And everything below this point relates to GeForce experience. Your options may look slightly different, so just make sure you click on each of them in order to read exactly what they do. This GeForce experience section over here allows you to turn on different components of GeForce experience. Just make sure that when you click certain options, you'll see that some require other things to be checked as well. So for example, if we want shadow play, we need to make sure that GeForce experience is ticked as well as virtual audio and process monitor. Each of these little requirements also have their own set of requirements. So GeForce Experience requires Node.js, then Telemetry requires nothing, so we'll take that. NV Backend requires nothing else. And finally, NV Container as well. Then Virtual Audio doesn't require anything. The rest of these should be fine. Process Monitor requires Shield Streaming Service, and that doesn't require anything else. So if you want GeForce Experience, this is likely going to be the minimum set of options you need to have ticked. Obviously, if you don't want NVIDIA GeForce Experience, you can just click Recommended and leave it as that. So with it customized to your liking, simply choose Next, and now it'll start downloading the latest graphics driver, modify it, and prepare to install it. So there we go. It's getting to the end, and now it's finally prepared the installer. At this section, we can further customize it. The only thing is I'd recommend checking are probably disabled telemetry at the very top, and you can choose an attended express installation to automatically take everything. You just run the installer and it runs to completion. No need to manually click next a bunch of times. Clean install, you can tick. Otherwise, if you've already run DDU, you can skip the step. If you'd like to run DDU, you'll find a video guide in the description down below. Adding hardware support is an advanced feature that allows you to add specific driver support or specific display support. DLSS indicator isn't necessary. Multiplane overlay can cause stuttering if you choose to disable this. And finally, disabling Ansel over here. If you don't want to take any Ansel screenshots and games, everything here I usually leave unticked. At the very bottom, showing expert tweaks. These are all experimental, or at least should be looked into before ticking them. You can disable driver telemetry and a couple of other things, but just keep in mind, these require the driver to be rebuilt, meaning it needs to also be re-signed and it's not technically going to be coming from NVIDIA as factory. It's not going to have their signature on it. It'll instead have your PC, so it could cause compatibility issues with anti-cheats such as Vanguard, Faceit, etc. It's recommended not to choose anything beyond this point here. That causes the driver to be rebuilt. HDCP you can disable, for example, but it could cause issues with streaming sites like Netflix, etc. And a bunch of these other things are really unnecessary. Usually you'll leave everything unticked in this expert tweaks here. Simply choose next. And finally, you can choose to install it or show our new installer in the folder. So here it is here. For now, I'll just click install. 
and we'll wait for it to finish. As we chose unattended, it'll automatically tick everything for us. If you want to send this file or save it somewhere else, you can click the build file at the very bottom to make a finished installer with everything packaged into one simple file for safekeeping or spreading to different PCs, etc. For now, we'll wait for this to finish and if our PC needs to restart, it'll do so as well. And there we go, it's done. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.